Hi, uh, my name is Duncan Lyle, and I've been a dancer with American Ballet Theatre since 2010, and I am from Melbourne, Australia. To me, the word inspiration is a feeling that you get inside. It's, um, it's that sort of instant hook, like you grab onto something and it's within you and you just have to, you just have to do it. You have to create to whatever that thing that has grabbed you is. Uh, generally what inspires me the most is music. Um, but I'm also often really inspired by film, especially uh, old Hollywood film. And I also get inspired by plays. Um, I started dancing when I was eight years old. Uh, I started with ballet first and then jazz and tap. Um, and I started composing very badly uh, whenever I got my hands on my first copy of Sibelius, which was probably about, um, I would say I was about 12 or 13, I think, when I started writing, writing music, but I really didn't know enough about music at the time to really take it seriously. And it's only in the last, I would say, few years that I've understood more about harmony that I've been able to write music more seriously. Um, to me, music and ballet are inextricably linked. There is, there is not one without the other. And there are definitely people that disagree with me. There are people that feel that they're two separate worlds and that you can have them separately. Um, but to me, there's no dance without music and music I think within us primitively inspires us to move. Um, working with a lot of different choreographers, there's lots of different things that um, can inspire them to create ballets. Some of them as literature and like literally words, like uh, working with Kathy Marsden um, recently on Jane Eyre Obviously Jane Eyre is literature, um, but she very much, she takes words. We didn't get to work with her on the creation of Jane Eyre, unfortunately, but she still explained to us the process. And she takes literally specific words for a character and she expands upon those literal words. So that's one example of what someone might use for inspiration, but also twice, um, for example, Alexi Ratmansky with Firebird and Wayne McGregor with Afterright. Um, in both of those cases, the choreographers were inspired by music that exists for this ballet, for their ballets, but they wanted to create their own twist on the ballet. They, this, the ballets already exist, but they wanted to do their own version, their own take, their own modern interpretation. And so I thought that was, that's really cool to be able to, for a choreographer to be able to do that, to take something that already, already exists and put their own twist on it. Um, sometimes personality, like literally the individual dancer will inspire a choreographer. There's sort of an infinite, an infinite amount of ways um, to be inspired. But I think music is often the most common. Um, yes. Well, the, like the examples, I think with most Ratmansky works, wrote most of Ratmansky's original works rather than his reconstructions, you can always tell that it's the music. For example, when we did the Shostakovich trilogy, um, it's each of the pieces is heavily inspired by its individual music. Um, and also when you, I've just started learning more about Shostakovich and it's, it's fascinating how it puts everything into context, but also it was, each piece has something to do with Shostakovich's own life. Um, 
but certainly that one, um, like Twyla Tharp's Brahms Haydn variations is very much linked to the music. I don't think it sort of exists in a world outside of its music. Um, yes, can't think of any other specific examples off the top of my head. <laughs> Yes, uh, I, uh, I think I think a big inspiration of Deuce Coop was that um, sort of idea, even more than the music, of combining uh, modern music with classical dance. But of course, the Beach Boys are a huge inspiration for the movement. I mean, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of '60s vernacular in there. So yeah, definitely Deuce Coop too. Uh, so for me, composing the music for my film was definitely um, a function of necessity rather than of of inspiration. Um, so all sort of took me a few to get there. Um, so when Kevin proposed making a film to me, uh, one of the things that we were told one of the limitations we were given was that the music needs to be public domain because there wasn't much of a budget. And when I came to the concept of my film, I sort of knew that I wasn't going to be able to find anything in the public domain that was going to be able to work for my concept. And also we were given the opportunity for um, an orchestra member or one of the pianists to play and I wanted to take advantage of that and wanted to take advantage of all of the resources we had on offer. Um, so really because my idea was so specific and sort of in scenes it was it would have taken and we had such a short amount of time to make the film it would have taken me far too long to try and find music that would work so I kind of just decided I'm going to have to do this myself. Um, and that was really the reason why I did it. Um, and I took bits of bits and pieces of things that I'd already composed. I've been playing for a few, few years almost of um, making a ballet out of Dracula. And so I used some of that music that I had composed for that and then some just composed some original stuff for it. Um, it was challenging. It, the piece ended up being about six minutes and it took me, I think about two days to compose, which is sort of a relatively short amount of time. Um, there was about a minute of it that I had pulled from something I already created and the rest was original. And I, I don't know, I feel, I don't feel very confident when I'm writing music because I'm not from that world. And I know that um, people from that world can be very um, <laughs> particular, um, but I feel that I know enough now about harmony and the function of harmony to sort of write. Um, a lot of it was me sitting at the piano and just playing around. And actually the last, the last section of the film was actually, it's sort of a play on um, I Can Go the Distance from Hercules, <laughs> just put into a minor mode. Um, but uh, there's also a little, a tiny snippet quote from Psycho by Bernard Herrmann in there. Um, but yeah, I just sort of pulled all the resources that I had in my mind for it to create it. And it was fun and I'm glad, I think it was the only route that I could have chosen in that moment and I'm glad that I did. Um, I would do it again, but I would do it differently next time in that 
because of the way our time was structured, I had to compose the music first. And I thought that I would do it like a ballet where the music's created and then you make dance to music. Um, so I had to create it first and then give it to Emily to play and record. And then I realized when we came to the editing that it was incredibly difficult to edit film to a pre-existing score, which I guess is what music videos do all the time. Um, but so things ended up being having more space than I wanted. Things ended up having less space than I wanted. So next time, if I was to do it again, I would have the edited film completed and then work on composing the score to the completed film instead of the other way around. Um, that is such a hard question. I think that's an impossible question for me to answer. Um, when I'm creating ballet, I usually, I mean, I have, I listen to music constantly and I have a catalog of music that I think will work for ballet and music that I wanna create for ballet. So basically all of the music on that list, I want to choreograph someday. Um, my favorite composer is Alkin. I don't know if you know who Jim Steinman is, but I want to create a ballet to Jim Steinman music one day. Um, a very cheesy 80s rock uh, composer. I love Jim Steinman. Um, there's a lot of big ones on the list. One of, I think my favorite piece of classical music is Dvorak's Ninth Symphony. And I think it would be impossible to choreograph. I can't imagine how I would do it, but I would love to try one day. <laughs>